to jump to number seven where they describe a different sample, not from the 11 original values we talked about earlier, but now a sample coming from 1,000 randomly selected um, flights. And we are counting the number of those that arrived on time. So I'm assuming on time or early versus late. And so we could break those into two groups, success being you're early or on time, and then an, a failure being late, and then counting the number of flights out of 1,000. So as soon as I start doing that, I start thinking, oh, I've got a discrete random variable, and it's the number of on-time arrivals. And I also see they ask me for a 99% confidence interval. So I'm going to come over here and 90, whoops, so really the pen stopped working in that short amount of time. Sorry, new pen. Um, finding the 99% confidence interval. And it says confidence interval for the percentage of the flights that were on time. So percentage. That's going to be a parameter for all. So it's a confidence interval for a parameter, and that parameter is rho. And that represents the percentage of all American airline flights that were on time. So our point estimate is going to come from one sample. I showed you that they took 1,000 flights. And so 1,000 observations in this study and counted, let's let x equal the count of on time. That's going to be my success. And um, from this, let's see, they told me that when they did count, they ended up, they didn't tell me how many out of a thousand, instead they gave me 80.3%. So let's see, 80.3% is my sample proportion. So my sample P is 0.803. Technically, that means that they found 803 out of the 1,000 planes that were on time. And when I'm counting and thinking a discrete random variable, success being on time, failure being not on time. I'm starting to think binomial. So I'm going to go, hey, do I have a simple random sample? Yes, by the plan of the study we do. Two, do I have the conditions for a binomial situation here? And do I have two outcomes? I have on time and I have not on time. So I grouped early and on time together. So this is the success. Do I have a fixed number of trials? So in this sample, how many observations did I decide to take? And I decided on a thousand. I wasn't going to just observe planes until somebody was on time. And let's see, I've got the binomial. Two outcomes for binomial. Fixed number of trials, so it's not geometric. Um, do I have independence? Now, I am going to employ, I'm not looking at a plane and then putting it back in the roster. I'm going to sample without replacement, but I'm going to keep my sample size, oh, that's supposed to be one word, um, in less than 5% of all the population of these American airline flights coming in. And so we can assume that because we're taking a, such a small number from the larger population that we're going to eh, get away with independence of these flights. So I've got independence, fixed number of trials, two outcomes. The last thing that I need is a fixed probability of success. And that is actually the parameter that I'm trying to estimate with my 99% confidence interval. So rho is supposed to be 
that fixed proportion. So I do have one that's rho. I just don't know the value of it. These four conditions together give me that x itself, all those possible observations, has a binomial distribution. And that would have anywhere between 0 and 1,000 successes each time. And each of these different values, in discrete, would have a bin. And from 0, 1, the number of uh, ways you could have one plane out of the 1,000 arriving on time, all the way to 1,000 planes arriving on time, dot, dot, dot. There's some distribution, some shape, depending on rho, whether it's going to be skewed or symmetric. Now, I would like to check one final condition. I would really like to use the normal dis di uh, distribution to approximate my binomial. And if I don't have this extreme skewness and I expect, now if you're doing Khan Academy, it says expect at least 10 successes, so at least 10 planes to arrive on time. Our textbook says at least five. We'll just go with 10. All right, n being 1,000. I don't know what rho is. I only know my observed probability was 0.803. That's the best I've got, 803. So I expect 803 on time, giving me left over. So how many do I expect to not be on time? Um, let's see, well, 1,000 minus that, so 190, was it seven? both of them clearly bigger than 10. This condition allows us to use the normal distribution to approximate our binomial. So, if I were to put all those observations, now that the normal curve is gonna go past zero, from infinity to negative infinity, but if it's approximating, then its center should be the same as the center of my normal. So that would be NP. The best I've got right now is, as an N row, the uh, best I've got now is NP. So the center would be 100, sorry, 803 would be the center of those counts with a standard deviation for the counts. So the standard deviation of the counts, the standard deviation for binomial. N, which is 1,000, P and 1 minus p, I call that q. q is the same thing as 1 minus p. But that's with x's. Remember, we're coming up with a confidence interval for rows, so I kind of want all my sample statistics p hats. So I'm going to switch over to the sampling distribution for p hats. So instead of x's on the number line, I'm going to put p hats. This sampling distribution of all of those is still going to be normal because I'm just dividing x by n, but now I'm going to have the center of all the p hats, which is uh, the statistics I'm using to estimate rho. That's going to be uh, rho, because you divided n p by n. I'm dividing the x's by n, and my standard deviation of all my p hats is now going to be the square root of p 1 minus p, which I call q, over n. So now I have a distribution for all the p hats. So my confidence interval is going to take my point estimate. I don't know how it fits in with rho, because I don't know what that is. I'm estimating it. Plus and minus my margin of error. My p hat from my test statistic. from my sample, my sample had 0 .0, 0 0.803. So starting with that, best guess. No confidence, let's add some confidence. Margin of error is gonna come from some um, number of standard deviations I can add and subtract so that 99% of my sample proportions are within that um, range of values of rho. So let's see, starting with 
my sample statistic plus and minus the same number. So that's going to be, what distribution does this have? Let's see, I approximately have normal. I better put that this is normal. That helps me out. This is still normal because of all the conditions I checked. So standard normal is going to help me. Let's see, I need 99% of all my sample proportions to lie within this number of standard deviations. That means that 1 minus 0.99, so C level, confidence level is 0.99. The complement is the significance level. All right, type one error, making finding uh, one of these samples out here that causes us to reject, but that's okay. So one minus 0.99. So that's 0 0.01. Two tails. So each of these tails has to share the leftover area. So that gives me 0 0.005. And the right tail and 0 0.005 area here in the left tail. Now that's going to be some z alpha over 2, which is z sub 0 0.005, number of standard deviations that I'm adding to row, oh, subtracting, and standard deviation would be square root of PQ over N, and then over here I'd have my row plus this critical value of standard deviations for the sampling distribution PQ over N. Standard deviation, critical value, and this, this is the parameter P. He's the center of the distribution. The confidence interval is kind of um, symmetrically uh, worded because if you start with the test statistic and add and subtract that same margin of error, then 99% of the time you would come up with a sample statistic so that the center, so that rho would be in this interval. So our test statistic cam coming from my sample 80.3% of my sample were on time, plus and minus this critical value, the number on the standard normal distribution that has 0 0.05 in the tail, times the, dis, uh, the standard deviation for the distribution. Let's go ahead and put that value in, 0.803. One minus that is 0.1. Uh, nine, seven. All right. Um, and then I need to divide first by 1,000. This is our um, standard deviation, critical value. The collection, this product, is the margin of error that I'm adding and subtracting to the point estimate. I need that. This is the z-score on the standard normal that has area alpha over 2. So I have a calculator function, inverse norm. If I give it the area 0 0.005, it will tell me 